a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprius, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but Jews. There were some Cypriots and Cyrenians among them, however, who came to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks as well, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith and a large number of people were added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All you nations, praise the Lord. All you nations, praise the Lord. His foundation upon the holy mountains the Lord loves. The gates of Zion, more than any dwelling of Jacob, glorious things are said of you, O city of God. All you nations, praise the Lord. I tell of Egypt and Babylon among those who know the Lord, of Felicia, Tyre, Ethiopia, this man was born there. And of Zion they shall say, one and all were born in her, and he who has established her is the Most High Lord. All you nations praise the Lord. They shall note when the peoples are enrolled, this man was born there, and all shall sing in their festive dance, my home is within you. All you nations praise the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The feast of the dedication was taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple area on the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one can take them out of the father's hand. The father and I are one. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel of John is one of the simplest written Gospels, but it's one of the hardest to perceive. It's, it's a Gospel that you, you meditate on. You, you read, but you, you meditate. And, and one of the things that's coming out is when Jesus is talking to the Jews, he indicates they're not believing. And he indicates they're not believing because they're not his sheep. Now, 
there's an interesting thing when you look at how people are saved. We know from scripture, we know from the teaching of the church that no one saves themselves. We are all saved by God's grace. No one has credit for it. All the people who are in heaven are there because God has somehow has ordained it and graced them. And so then you're going to say, well, wait a minute. What about the people like the Jews, those who don't believe? Well, they don't believe because they have chosen not to. In fact, our, we are, our faith teaches us that although those who are in heaven are there because of God and God alone, those who are in hell are in hell because of their own acts. And you're going to say, well, wait a minute, how, how does this work? It's sort of a contradiction. You know, those who are saved have chosen to be saved. Well, no. Um, those who are in hell are there because they weren't graced. No, it's a mystery. We don't know. We just know that those of us who respond to God's <laughs> grace, and there are many, and he goes, you know, he's speaking, there's many outside this fold. There's, you know, speaking of the, the non-Jews. And we need to be open to that. One, we need to be praying that God grace us, open our hearts. We can't save ourselves. It's up to you to do it. And we also need to be open that those around us may be given God's grace. And we need to be able to nourish that. And even those who or even outside the fold of Christianity. Now, Grant, we're all saved through Jesus, and we need to do a missionary activity. But yet, every so often you hear about a non-Christian who gives his life for another, and you think, they obviously did that by God's grace. Now, whether they responded enough to God's grace to be saved, that's, that's God's problem, not ours. But when we come to the Eucharist, let us come, one, thanking him that since we're here, we know we are responding to God's grace. And we pray that he graces us more to respond to his grace. And then we pray also that we may be vessels of his grace to others. So those who right now might not be listening, those who right now might not be responding, that we and somehow could bring God's grace to them to help them to come to him. May Jesus Christ be praised. Now and forever.